Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing the thermodynamics section of the 2024 USNCO local exam. So this is from questions 19 through 24. Let's start with question 19. Which statement about phase transitions is correct? Let's go through our answer choices. A. Melting is endothermic and freezing is exothermic. Well, melting is endothermic because it requires energy to be put into the system, and freezing is exothermic because uh, energy is taken away from the system and that's how you freeze. So A is a potential candidate, that seems correct, but let's make sure everything else is wrong. B says vaporization is exothermic and condensation is endothermic. Well, in order to vaporize, you need to add energy, so you're not going to be getting energy out. Uh, so it's not exothermic, and uh, similarly, condensation is not endothermic, it's exothermic, it releases energy. So B is wrong. Uh, C, the enthalpy change for a spontaneous phase transition is always positive. That's not true. The uh, enthalpy change can be whatever. Uh, what really matters is your free energy, which is a function of the enthalpy and the entropy. So this is not true. And then D, the entropy change for a spontaneous phase tra uh, transition is always positive. That's also not necessarily true. You could have other values for your enthalpy or temperature or whatever, and that could help make this positive or negative. It could go either way. So D is wrong, and therefore our answer is answer choice A. Let's move on to question 20. Based on the given bond dissociation enthalpies, what is the change in enthalpy of reaction? What is the enthalpy of reaction for the addition of methane to uh, ethyne to give propene? So the enthalpy of reaction is going to be uh, the sum of the enthalpy of uh, the bonds broken minus the sum of the enthalpies of all the bonds formed. So we have to figure out in this reaction what bonds are broken and what bonds were formed. And in order to do that, let's draw out all our compounds. So you have CH4 methane and you have uh, ethyne, so C tri a triple bonded to another C, and these are both connected to H's. And this is all forming propene, so CH3 to a C, double bonded to a C. You have two H's on here, one H here, and three H's here. So what bonds must be broken and formed to create this from these starting materials? Well, this CH bond is going to have to break. Uh, let me do that in red. So this CH bond is going to have to break, and the C is going to form a bond with this C in order to get this, uh, this group onto this C, uh, that carbon. And then you're going to have to break the triple bond to form a double bond. So you're breaking the triple bond, forming a double bond, and you're also forming a bond between this carbon and then this hydrogen. And if you do all these things, you will get this. So in total, three things are being formed. It's the, the CC bond, uh, the CH bond, and then the CC double bond. And two things are being broken, which is a CH bond and a CC triple bond. So I've written down the broken and the formed bonds. And so now we have to sum up the enthalpies and subtract them. So let's sum up the enthalpies of the broken bonds, which is the CH and the C triple bond. So CH is 415 uh, kilojoules per mole. Uh, the C triple bond is going to be 837. And then you're going to subtract the sum of all the enthalpies that you, uh, of the bonds that you form. So CH is 415. Uh, CC is 345. And the C double bond is 611. And if you do add the calculation, you'll get that your total uh, enthalpy of reaction is going to be uh, negative 119 kilojoules per mole, which is answer choice A. Okay, let's move on to question 21. Which statements must be true for a, for a non-spontaneous gas phase chemical reaction at constant temperature and pressure? So we're told that it's non-spontaneous. That immediately tells us that our change in free energy delta G is going to be positive, which is uh, 1. So we, we, know, we know for sure that 1 is required, it's needed. So 1 is correct. But we also have to look at 2, which says that K, your equilibrium constant, must be less than 1. Now we're not given now, we're not given that this reaction is happening at standard conditions, so our equation for uh, change in free energy is going to be uh, the standard change in free energy plus RT ln K. 
Now, if your kp is less than 1, then that means your natural log, this ln k value, is going to be negative. So this entire term becomes negative. Now, remember, you want your delta g to be positive. You want this number to be positive. So if you want this number to be positive, and you know that this number is negative, that doesn't really tell you a lot about this number. So whether or not delta g is positive or negative depends on the magnitude and the, the sign of this number, which is the change in uh, free energy at standard conditions. So 2 is not necessarily required. Uh, you mostly you only just need to know that your uh, change in free energy is greater than 0, which tells you that it's non-spontaneous. So the answer is answer choice A. Let's move on to question 22. Benzene has an enthalpy of vaporization of 30.7 kilojoules per mole at its normal boiling point of 80.1 degrees Celsius. What is the change in entropy of vaporization at this temperature? The way we're gonna do this uh, question is by using the formula for free energy. So we know that the change in free energy is equal to the change in uh, enthalpy minus T delta S or the change in entropy. Now, we know that benzene is at its normal boiling point. So at this stage, uh, both the liquid and the vapor stages or phases are going to be in equilibrium. That means your delta G is going to be zero. There is no change in free energy. Um, so you have other values. You have the, the enthalpy of vaporization, and you have the temperature, which lets you solve for your uh, entropy of vaporization. So you can set up the calculation, and if you do it out, so 30700 uh, divided by 353.1 our temperature that will give you the change in entropy to be 86.9 joules per mole kelvin which is answer choice b let's move on to question 23 which reaction has a change in entropy of less than zero so in which one of these reactions is entropy decreasing well, for A, you're going from carbon in, in its graphite form to carbon in its diamond form, and diamond is way more structured than graphite. So this will uh, decrease the entropy of your system. So A seems to be correct. Let's make sure everything else is wrong. B, you're going from one molecule to two molecules. That's an easy way to increase entropy. Uh, C, you're going from a solid to a gas, which also increases entropy. And then D, you're, going, you're doing an acid-base reaction and you're neutralizing uh, these ions. Now, there's not a lot of information here. You're going from two particles to two particles, so you can pretty safely assume that uh, there's gonna be very minimal, basically zero change in entropy, and this reaction wouldn't be very favored. These are weak acids and weak bases, while these are strong acids and strong bases. So it's uh, the K of this reaction would be very, very small. It'd be way lower than one, so this reaction would barely go, so entropy wouldn't change much at all. Therefore, your answer is answer choice A. Let's move on to question 24. What is the KSP of PBCl2 at 298 Kelvin? So since we're talking about KSP, that's going to be uh, what happens when you dissociate your uh, uh, lead chloride solid into the lead ion and the two chloride ions. And these are, of course, both aqueous, aqueous, so I'll write those in. Now, we're given thermodynamic data about the uh, enthalpy of formation and the entropy, so we need some way to use this information to get the Ksp. And the way we're going to do that is by relating the fact that your delta G is equal to minus RT ln K. I'm shortening the equation here because... We know that this is at 298 Kelvin, so we can do everything at standard conditions since we already know that all, all our values are given at standard conditions. So if we knew our delta G, we could solve for K. So now we have to figure out delta G. We know that delta G is equal to the change in uh, uh, enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. So we can calculate both of these values. Uh, the change in uh, enthalpy is going to be the enthalpy of formation of all of these minus the enthalpy of formation of the pure solid. So lead 2 plus, the enthalpy is negative 1,700 uh, joules, uh, joules per mole. I'm just going to neg neglect units for a little bit. Uh, plus 2 times the chloride ion, which is negative 167,200. Um, 
and so this is minus the uh, lead chloride solid which is negative 359,400. So doing out the calculation, uh, you get that your change in enthalpy is about uh, 23,300 23, 23, 23, joules per mole. Now we have to do the same calculation for our change in uh, entropy. So the lead one is 10.5 uh, joules per mole Kelvin um, plus two times the chloride one, which is 56.5, uh, and then minus the lead chloride solid, which is 136. And doing out the calculation, you get that your change in entropy is negative 12.5 joules per mole Kelvin. So now we can solve for delta G. So that's going to be the change in uh, enthalpy. So 23,300 joules per mole minus T uh, 298 Kelvin times the change in entropy, which is negative 12.5 joules per mole times Kelvin. I'm just going to neglect the units. So the change in free energy comes out to 27,025 joules per mole. And now we can finally plug this into our equation that delta G is equal to negative RT ln K, and this will so help us solve for K. So K is gonna be equal to E to the negative delta G over RT, and I'm kind of running out of space, so I'll just plug this into my calculator, plug in all the values that we have. So K is gonna be equal to E to the uh, negative delta G, so the answer that we just got, divided by R, so 8.3145 times T, so 298. And so our K comes out to 1.83 times 10 to the negative 5, uh, and that is our answer. That corresponds to the answer choice B, which is the answer for question 24. And that's the end of the thermodynamics section. I think it's quite a fun section. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.